we want to return now to Lahoma and the North Central Research Station field tour where Dave Deacon talks with our soil nutrient specialist, Brian Arnell. So Brian, you, you talked with uh, producers up here at Lahoma about top dressing. Yeah, we have a demo out here that it was really excited about in the first of the year where we're demonstrating all the different ways we can apply top dress nitrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, have a whole suite of nitrogen management uh, techniques. Uh, we applied multiple sources, uh, UAN, urea, mm -hmm. uh, anhydrous, and a lot of different methods. We, we looked at urea with MBPT. We looked at urea by itself broadcast. We used a grain drill, a double disc grain drill, to put urea in the ground oh, in wow. March, top okay. dress. We used culture for both anhydrous and liquid UAN. We used a flat fan nozzle and a streamer nozzle for UAN. And we wanted to demonstrate all the different mechanisms and approaches to applying top dress. Mm -hmm. and we did it at a rate where in a normal year, we'd actually expect to see differences. Mm -hmm. So I under fertilized. Right, right. Of course, this year, the check, which didn't get any, looks the same right. as even the pre-plant rate <laughs> and everything else. So no big differences to talk about. So I could, I could line out at least the methods right. and how we did it. They could see the impact of running a grain drill through the wheat. They could see the impact of running the coulter rig through the wheat where the grain drill, you can't really see where that went through. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the coulter, due to the drought and a little more aggressive nature, you can still see its paths. Paths. I wouldn't necessarily expect to see that in a normal year where we have rainfall. Right. So we aren't gonna be able to look at yield or the efficiency of these mechanisms like we'd normally want right. to. But one of, my, uh, one of my take homes from this is as soon as we get out of the field with grain harvest, we'll come in and soil sample. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna look at what form the nitrogen's still in the soil, to what extent, over these different, different materials and different methods. Once we do that, I'll put together a blog post, an extension newsletter, and at least show what happened this year. You know, how much of that urea with the late top dress is still there. Right. You know, this year we only had about 10, uh, one tenth of an inch of rain after top dress. Right. So we haven't had any incorporation with rainfall. Mm -hmm. It's just sitting there. And we'll be able to look back and see what's still left there, and that'll help hopefully help guide some of the next year's decisions. Well, I was, I was going to ask about that. What What's in the ground now may be there next year also. Yeah, yeah one, one, I guess you'd call it a joke I've been telling people today is we aren't going to have to worry about leaching. We <laughs> haven't pushed the nitrogen out right. with rainfall this year. So there is going to be significant uh, carryover from last year, especially where it was fully fertilized, expecting a good crop. Mm -hmm. and we've had either drought or freeze or what be take the crop out. Right. So soil testing is going to be essential to see what's left in that soil. Mm -hmm. If it's a pre-plant where you incorporated, you know the nitrogen's in the ground, mm -hmm. look at removal. How much grain did you take off? How much right. hay did you take off? And account for that in the coming years in Rex. If it's top dress, the same system, same approach, you know, look at what's been removed, but we're gonna to have to actually look at what might have made it into the soil anyways. Right. If it's a no-till and you used a liquid or a dry, there's a very good chance that that nitrogen is still in the residue and won't come up on a soil sample. Okay, so let's let's say best best case scenario, we get a two inch rain. Mm -hmm. Are we still in the same ballpark for next year? No, if, what's gonna happen with the system uh, is that two inch rain is going to mess with the, the soil test. Right. If the soil test is taken prior to the two inch rain. Right. In a normal year, we have a significant amount of residue or mm -hmm. root growth. Mm -hmm. It would really change that nitrogen uh, value because that's going to start breaking down and the nitrogen is going to take it up by the microbes. Right. In this case, uh, as we think about it, we've had not had a lot of root mass, mm -hmm. not a lot of straw mass, and so there will be less residue to break down. Right. So we'll lose some when it starts raining. Mm -hmm. But we aren't going to lose as much as, say, if we had a uh, 80 bushel wheat crop or 80 bushel straw crop for that fact. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to look at that, take considerations. Um, I don't want anybody to plan for disaster. Right. We need to make sure we are prepping this crop, this coming crop, to its full potential. Uh, but take into account residual. There's probably not a need just to front load a lot of nitrogen this coming summer. Mm -hmm. um, but there is need to make sure there's enough in there to get our next crop off. Okay, so, so once again, you always preach, soil sample, soil sample, soil sample. Soil sample, soil sample. Okay, thank you much. Brian Arnell with Oklahoma State University.